What's up, guys? I thought I would make another video talking about things that I've learned about Dragon. Kind of like I did with the Tigers. So this would be about the different types of kits that there are. And in prepping for this, I've realized that it's actually even harder to understand than I thought it was. I thought I could explain it real quickly and be like, oh yes, this is a this. Uh, this is what it actually means. This is a misconception of what it means. Because I think there is some of that. But it's not that simple. So the first thing that we'll talk about, and I don't have any here, I have one sort of here, is the Imperial series. These are old dragon kits. All of their kit numbers start with 9,000 something. So 9 something something something. And they're old. They date from, I think, 1995 until... 2002 might be the old, I could be wrong with that, but around the early 2000s, so about five to seven years, of when I believe Dragon bought these Gunza Sangyo molds, I could be saying that wrong, um, and I'm just picking this up from stuff I've read. So a lot of these kits um, are sort of infamous, there's a, like the Flak Panther, and any of the early Stugs, of which this is sort of one, this is a, like a C with uh, pack 40. But I'll, I'll show you why. This is a reboxed Imperial series. And I'll see if I can show you any of why it's horrible. Um, so my advice, by the way, is don't ever buy anything Imperial series. Uh, this was my son's. He's 16. And this actually got him to quit modeling, this kit. Like, he started and quit on this one. If you look at how those wheels fit on, like the... this, I had to drill these out. Because they wouldn't even fit on these torsion bars, like the hole in the wheel didn't fit on this. And so he could have glued these on poorly, so maybe there's some salvaging to this, but seriously, these wheels didn't fit here. Um, and it's just crappier plastic. This, now this is a orange box, and I'll talk about that later, but it's essentially a rebox of an Imperial series kit, which is, spoiler alert, what orange boxes primarily are. So this had um, there's no way you can probably see it, but it had the raised lines for, um, instead of locator holes, like a locator outline that you have to shave off with a, a blade of some sort, so they're very different to what we're used to. I would invo avoid Imperial stuff at all costs. Now this one came with PE, but it also had the original, like, solid covered grills but this, again, was an upgraded version, but it's still the worst kit in this house. And that's including, like, old Tamiya stuff from the 70s. Like, this is the worst thing we have here. So that's Imperial series. I'll put up some pictures of infamous ones, like the Michael Wittmann Stug A. Right? Or... Is there a Stug 4 that I know is Imperial? There's a handful of them. I, I, I won't buy them. If you see that it's the size of the box are red. Um, again, the 9,000 numbers. Now, there could be gems in there, but I don't touch them. They're horrible. And if you don't know that they're horrible, people will charge you the same price for those that they do for, like, modern decent kits. So I'm going to get rid of this now. Okay, so this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. So I also don't have a ton of older... 39 to 45 series, which is the name of modern dragon stuff, right? So let's bring up one. Again, this is one of my kids that he's now made me finish, or he said I have to finish. Um, so this is a 2005. I don't have any of the 2002 uh, era ones. Now, those do exist, obviously. Um, how can I explain that without having them here? So a 2002 Panther... And there's like three or four of those, the early A, the late A. They have two-piece barrels, they have molded-on torsion bars, very similar to the old, old Tamiya stuff. And it was the beginning of this series, right? So how are you, if you're inexperienced, which is who I'm making this video for, to know that, like, this one is good because it came out three years later than one that came out in 2002? Well, how would you know? You go to scalemates.com and you research the kit lineage. I know that's a pretty nerdy thing to do, and a lot of guys who do reviews don't bother with talking about that, the, the where these sprues come from, but I figure you kind of have to. Um, 
So go there, look around. Like, I'll put up a screenshot of the history of this King Tiger kit right here. So I know everything about it just based on typing in the kit number when I get it or when I'm looking at it on eBay. I'm like, let's see, King Tiger 6254. And I type that in and it'll tell me when it was tooled, when it was reboxed with new parts, when it was reboxed without new parts, everything. So this is what's complicated. Um, so the, the 135, 39, and 45 series covers from 2002-ish, or whenever that started, and, and, and whenever Imperial ended until now. And there is such a, a, a mix of different levels of kit in there that it's really, really hard to explain to someone that you kind of just have to feel that out and learn about it. So as I said, the, the 2000, 2002 Panthers are not good. They require a lot of updating. So I would not recommend those really at all. I'd stay away from them completely. This guy, this KT, comes with metal barrel, metal rounds, P grills, magic tracks, like all of this stuff that we would consider like amazing now because none of their kits come with it anymore. And this was just their run of the mill series in 05. So at the same time, this is considered exactly the same. Now, that's called a super kit. I think that's a colloquial term. I don't think anyone ever wrote it on a box. But we in the community refer to these as super kits. Why? Well, their part count is crazy. Um, so these have more than a thousand parts. They have, like, right, PE, 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 the styrene cactus, the Gen 2 Guderian, metal barrel rounds, all this stuff, and just crazy levels of detail in plastic. This came out the same year as that King Tiger I just had up here, um, and there's no difference in name. If you look at it, 2005, 3945 series, my apologies for the sound, this has already been built, so I don't know what's in there, probably just bits. Um, so, to the, the new guy, how are you to know? They have the same colors here, Obviously, there's a ton more renders here, but same year, right? Like, how do you know? And even the kit number, 6254, 6264, very similar. Um, you, you don't, unless you, again, just do research. If you look at the back of this, this is just cardboard, which they just started to do uh, the renders on the back in 05. Which, by the way, though, this is a very good kit. I actually really, really like things from 2005. I buy them as much as I can, because that seems to be the year... Or dragon. So anyway, same year, I said this one has renders in the back and it's considered a super kit. So, again though, same series, right? So a lot of the confusion comes from the terms smart kit, premium, and then the ones that aren't called anything, which is the 39 to 45 series without any sort of secondary name. So let's check out this guy. That's a premium Panther A, right? So the kit I was just complaining about a minute ago that was tooled in 2002, this is it. But this is it severely retooled. So, yes, these come with... All right, this needs to be said. Like, there's some confusion about what makes premium premium and what makes smart kits smart kits. That's the reason I decided to make the video. I think a lot of people misconstrue what a smart kit is. So a premium kit is a severely retooled old kit. That's the important part. And then the goodies. This one has metal barrel, metal shirts, and uh, PE, God, this is gonna suck. PE spare track thing. All the grills, all the fun stuff, right? But the important part, in my opinion, of these things is that they fixed the, um, the hull tub, has separate torsion bars. In the original kit, this was a two-piece machine gun mount, like there was a seam that ran right above where the MG comes out. It was horrible. So not only did they add all this stuff in there, but they fixed the awful kit. And instead of tracks on sprues, which is what you get from older 39 to 45 series, you get magic tracks. Yay. So premiums in general are meant to represent what people were doing with these older kits anyway. So they, and I think in some cases they even got the PE from companies that were making aftermarket. I might be wrong about that, but I read that somewhere. So essentially, they are older kits with a ton of PE 
sometimes to a scary extent, um, and then goodies with them, right? So that is pretty extensive for stuff in there. Uh, I'm a little intimidated by some of this. That's not terrible. They're metal, uh, clamps, right? PE clamps in a lot of these, which is what a lot of guys were doing to upgrade them. However, just a little side note, all the premium panthers have awful color instructions, which I do not like. Uh, but all the king tigers do as well. Keep it on there. So that's premium. Premium means old kit, buttload of PE, probably some goodies. Now, there's been some drama because they've been taking the goodies out. I was victim of that as well. I'll get to that in a minute. But that's what premium means. Smart kits, bam, means, all right, according to Dragon, what smart kit means is you don't need to buy anything else. That's all that it meant, that it's a self-contained build in a box, right? And, but that doesn't mean anything. Like, if you look at this one, there's a ton of PE in this turret. I don't like that. In general, what it means, if you read their description, is they've simplified the, the complexity of the kit and made more stuff styrene than PE. Which is why I like them in the first place, because I'm kind of crap with PE. So what smart kit actually means is easier, less PE. And then I grabbed this one to use as an example, and there's actually quite a large PE fragment here, which made me look like a turd. But in general, that's, again, why I'm making the video. Smart kit does not mean there's lots of stuff in it. It actually means it's simplified, and it's mostly plastic. Premium means it's an old kit, upgraded with PE and goodies. But then we get into muddier waters, I, I figured out, because let's go back to this guy again. So this is 2005, uh, 3945 series generic Dragon World War II stuff. And then they released this in 2007. Now I looked in this when my son was attempting to build that other KT. They are the exact same kit, right? Except this one, like, is labeled with Zimmerit, but, and it has the exact same goodies in it, like, the reason it gets muddied is because these don't specify a uh, smart kit or anything, they just say with Zimmerit, which means they're default 39 to 45 series, but they're essentially the exact same kit as the other one was, except this one, I think, has an upgraded MG, like it has the seven part MG or whatever, and like that's it. And then, yeah, well, there's like one other thing that was different when I saw him doing it. Oh, it could have been the tow cable, I'm not sure. But they're very, very similar, and they only came out a couple years apart. This one obviously is Zimmerit. But so this one with Zimmerit is basically a rebox, so they, they kept the fret and the goodies and the big old decal sheet and all that stuff and just threw in newly tooled Zimmerit stuff. This one was Zimmerit, which came out, I think, the year after. This guy has a lot less stuff in it. He only has um, like three grills per side and then he's got DS tracks and a styrene barrel. And the reason that I'm saying it's confusing is the boxings look the same. They've got the same Zimmerit strip, and they have that logo. And they came out right around the same time, but they have very, very different levels of stuff in the box. So again, the only way to know, research, right? Just go to Scalemates, look at somebody's review, somebody takes pictures. Um, I often go to this um, modelmaking.u site because they have images of instructions and of every sprue and pretty high res. Uh, I will put a screenshot of it right here. And that's what I use to check what's in stuff if there's not an adequate review. That always won't be there either though. So, other stuff. Cyber Hobby white box, right? These things cost about twice as much as their smart kit equivalent or their normal equivalent because here you go this is a cyber hobby white box limited edition but it's also a smart kit doesn't really mean anything like this is on a per kit basis anyway there's a very very equivalent kit of this i think it's just a, a mid or a late so it's got the two-piece exhaust um but everything else is identical it's a smart kit so fine i think there's some grills and then just these little dudes here that are PE. There's not a whole lot of PE in here. 
right? But magic tracks, I think there's probably metal cables, but it doesn't really matter. All white box means is that they put some kind of difference in it, and then probably some markings, maybe. I think because this is an initial, it has a the early muffler, because most J's are the two, because H's all had these. But white boxes don't really mean squat. They just mean that they were limited, and there might be like a tiny difference. Plus, all the parts for the, the two-piece exhaust are in this box anyway. This is basically a marketing ploy, uh, which I talked about in the Tiger video. So there's really no reason to overpay. Like, if you can find a normal Dragon kit that's a, a similar or the same vehicle, which a lot of times you can, these aren't really worth paying for. Nor is this, like, a Dragon Expo. There's not a that's not the same kind of limited edition white box thing. It's because it doesn't have like the number, but it's again just some particular person's vehicle. So it'll be this one has a slight difference that is wood here. It's not on the normal early Asurung Jeep, and that's it. Uh, and then so if you overpay for this, you're silly. Just don't do that. So those are white boxes. And oh, too many kits. Let's get into orange boxes. Here's that awful thing I brought up earlier. I don't have no idea what's in there. Sand, probably. Um, so this guy is a reboxed Imperial series. You can tell because if you look, there's that 9000 I was talking about. So what they did with this, in the similar vein to what they do with the... Um... Oh, total mind blank there, sorry. To uh, so what they do with premiums is they put in magic tracks very minimal PE, just these two grills. And then they throw in an old figure set, and they're like, bam, 35 bucks for a kit that is a tooling from like a million years ago and does not go together at all. I hate these. I only ever bought one because my kid was like testing the water of, of modeling, and I'm like, fine, I'll get him something cheap. And it's like the cheapest thing on Scale Hobbyist. It's like 20 bucks, and there's a reason for that. It's awful. So, I don't like this type of orange box. Now, however, that does not mean that all orange boxes are created equally. This one is terrible. You need to look at the lineage of that orange box and figure out if it's an Imperial Series rebox. If it's not, it could be this guy, which is basically 6600 with other parts in it, so it's got the, the two-half turret thing, and this is fantastic for what it cost. Oh, there's still DS in there, but whatever. Like, so... Some orange boxes, and by some I mean I know this one. I don't know any other off the top of my head. Um, like the Jagdpanzer um, A0, maybe that was okay. Cohen built it, and I don't remember if he thought it was good or not. But you kind of have to check them out. You go to scale meets, you look around, and then you figure out if it's a rebox of a crappy kit or if it's a rebox of an okay one. Lastly, I'll talk about this guy. Um, again, this is 2005, I think. Yep. So this had all kinds of good stuff in it. It's not listed in the box because this was before they were putting stuff, but there's... Oh, it's on the side. Metal barrel and shells and these things and all this stuff. Uh, most of this wasn't in here when I got it, and this is where the drama's been coming from. Uh, if it's on the box when you get it and the stuff isn't in there, you can send Dragon Care a picture of this and they'll give you the stuff because you caught them. They'll be like, oh, you got me. And then they'll give it to you. If it's not on the box, because apparently they've been updating the boxes, especially on the premiums, then you're just boned and you get nothing. So that's another thing you have to worry about when buying Dragon Kits, because this is simply listed as 3945 series from 2005, so again, it's the same as all these other kits that I had from that era. But depending on when it was boxed, it will or won't have all the stuff advertised. So I guess... Long story short, there is no easy answers to what kind of kits to buy. You just have to spend like a year or two learning the ropes and then research the kits and then buy them. I only have that one awful orange box that I don't like. I, everything else I buy, I know what I'm getting. And I like it. So it's not that scary. But the main reason I wanted to, to talk about stuff was the difference between premium and smart kit. And then there's that long, long list of kits that are not labeled with any of those smaller monikers. They're just, this is what they are. And those you need to research. And that's all there is to it.